So as we are still working with our exam revisions, uh, this is another question that you're going to consider, actually questions that we are going to consider on our exponents. So we've got the first part, which was to simplify. Uh, then the second part, which was to solve the following equations, which is part of also our exponents. So guys, these are questions that you might be given in your examinations or in your tests which are similar to these. Just make sure you go th uh, through the introductions. Uh, I managed to talk about that on your exponents so that you know the basics of your laws of exponents as I explained all these from your grade eight and also the continuation of your grade nine. You need to know all the basics, all right? So we are given a bracket raised to the exponent of a zero and a bracket raised to the exponent of three in this case. All right, there are two brackets. But of these two brackets, the first one, it is a direct situation that we are going to have in that case because uh, we can simply see. Let me just even write it here so that we do not have confusion. The first bracket, guys, we can simply see that it is raised to the exponent of zero, the wall of it, the wall bracket. So if a number is raised to the exponent of a zero, you know that is going to give us what? A one. It's a bracket. Once you see the whole bracket like that, raised to the exponent of zero, guys, it means you're going to get a one here. All right? So that was going to be one times, remember, it's a product. Or you could have used the, the same concept from this law, uh, law number four. When you have a bracket raised to the exponent of n, everything is raised to that exponent of n. Everything. So in our case, we have 8x raised to the exponent of 0. So we're going to have 8 raised to the exponent of 0 times x also raised to the exponent of what? Of a 0. So remember that any number to the exponent is what? It's 1 to the exponent of a 0. You have a 1. So this was going to give us 1 times 1, which is 1. So guys, without wasting much time, if you see that bracket, just know it's what? It's a 1. All right. Then on this part, the exponent is not 0. There's an exponent there which is given 3. So we must affect each and every part properly. 3 must be raised to the exponent of what? Of 3. 3 to the exponent of 3. 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times. That was going to give us what? 27. X is also raised to the exponent of 3 as it is. So that's X to the exponent of 3. The Y squared is also this one. It's Y squared is also raised to the exponent of 3. So take note. An exponent to an exponent. What are you going to do? Exponent to exponent. You combine them together. You multiply uh, these together. So that's m times n. In our case, we are simply going to multiply 2 times 3. So that's y to the exponent of what? 6. 2 times 3. Everything over what? The denominator as it is is not affected as you can see. There is nothing uh, to use there. So just rewrite as it is. So this is where you are. Remembering, guys, we are multiplying by 1 here. The bracket that we got to say, this bracket gave us a 1. But it's a product. As we know, any number times 1 remains as it is. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 3 is 3. So if you multiply this to 1. It is just going to remain as it is. 27x to the exponent of 3, y to the exponent of 6. Everything over what? 12x to the exponent of 5, y to the exponent of 2. At this stage, we are under a division. So I said, make sure you divide the numbers on their own. Make sure that the numbers that are on their own so we are going to divide these numbers, guys. As we can deal with the numbers, we can even reduce this one, guys, by, we can even divide by what? By 3. 27 by 3, uh, that is 9. 
12 divided by 3, that is what? A 4 divided by 3. That is going to give us a 4. This one, if you divide by 3, is going to be what? Uh, 9. So you're going to have 9 over 4. All right? Leave it like that. You move on to the part of x. What is happening on x here? It's a division, remember? And I said division, subtract exponents. You subtract exponents. So you're going to subtract here this exponent to this one. So it's x to the exponent of 3, the one on top, minus the one in the denominator. So that's 5. So it was going to be x to the exponent of 3 minus 5, which is what? Minus 2. All right? So this is what you're going to have, x to the exponent of minus 2 times, you do the same thing on the y there. Same base. So subtract y to the exponent of 6. You subtract these two. So that was going to be 6 minus 2. That's what? That's 4. So this is y to the exponent of 4. Working with these guys, we are simply going to evaluate further our laws, remembering that from our grade 9, like I said, this is what we have, our laws, the law of a negative exponent. To remove that, it's 1 over, 1 over that. That is to remove a negative. So meaning to say, we are going to remove the negative here on this x here, the x is to the exponent of negative 2, this one. We must get rid of the negative. So everything remains as it is, the 9 over 4 as it is. So this is 9 over 4 times. How do you remove a negative? 1 over. So it's 1 over what? x squared times the y to the exponent of 4. We do not have a negative, so it remains as it is. But just to have it as a fraction, just like all these, they are fractions. So how can we have it as a fraction? We just write it over 1 like this. Every term, whole number that you have can be written as a fraction by dividing it by what? By 1. So doing this allows us now to multiply the numbers or the terms that we have in the numerator together. So that's 9 times 1 times y to the exponent of 4. So it was going to be 9 y to the exponent of 4 over what? 4 times x squared times 1. So 4 times 1, that's 4. x is going to remain as it is, x to the exponent of 2. Just like that. There is nothing that we can do. These two are not the same. This is y, this is x. There is no law that we can use. We just have to leave it like that. There is no law that we can use. So we are going to leave it like that. In that case, we are in the simplest form. So this is how questions might be given as you just have to be careful, guys, in your presentations, how to answer your questions. All right. Solve the following equations. These are part of also our exponents. Remember, we had part where we've got exponential equations. So 4.3, x squared is equal to 25. How can we solve this? Uh, this one we can use. Uh, the one that we had in our grade 8, we had these typical equations. When you're given an exponent of 2, an exponent of 3, you remove that. If it is exponent of 2, you introduce the square root both sides. If it is to the exponent of 3, x cubed is equal to 125. Instead of uh, you having the square root, it will be the cube root. You put this number 3 inside of the root sign like this. So it will be cube root, cube root, both sides. Once you do this, this cancel, guys, you remain with what? With x, which is equal to the cube root of this. Just like that. So in our case, there's a square, the square, the opposite square root. There's a two here, which is inside, but they don't, you don't show it on a, on a square root, but just know that there's what? There's a two there. So x is equal to what? What is the square root of 25? That's plus or minus 5. The square root of any number is plus or minus. So means say x is equal to minus 5, or you can start with plus. So it's plus 5, or x is equal to minus 5. That is the case. So this one uh, could have been used under exponents, could have been used as an equation, no more equation, which is not under exponents. Uh, but here I want to solve it as exponents. That is how you could have just done it. 
Or you just ask yourself, remember I was saying, if these numbers have got uh, same bases, it means the exponents are the same. Also, if the exponents are the same, it means the bases are the same. So you just ask yourself, can we write 5 in the exponent of what? 2. I mean, this 25. Can it be written as a number raised to the exponent of 2? So we know that is going to be what? 5 to the exponent of what? 2. But this part was going to be tricky because you just see the base and it's raised to it. Then you just say, okay, my x is equal to what? My x is equal to 5. But take note, when a number is being raised to the exponent of 2, there can be two numbers that you can have there. It can be a negative 5, which was raised to the exponent of 2 to give us 25. It can be a 5. So you must be very careful now when you see this coup. So the best is to introduce that square root there, you see? It will be best for you to introduce the square root when it was like that, or the cube root, just like what I did on the first part. But know that your answers, there are two, plus and another one being a negative. 4.4, still on the equations. 2 to the exponent of x is equal to 32. How can I solve this equation? 2 is the simplest base that I have. It is in the simplest form. Remember, it is a prime number. So I'm going to leave it like that. I move on to the 32. Can it be written in the base of 2? It will be 2 to the exponent of what? So that's 2 to the exponent of a 5. Just need to know your exponents, 2 to the exponent of 1, until you get what? 32. 2 to the exponent of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, until you get 32. Or like I said, you can use your calculator. Remember the fact concept that I was using? On our introduction, 32 is equal to, then shift fact, shift fact, shift fact, this one. So it gives you the exponent, 2 to the exponent of what? 2 to the exponent of 5. 32 in the simplest form is 2 to the exponent of what? 5. So since the bases are the same, these ones, it means automatically, therefore, our x is going to be what? Our x is going to be equal to 5 automatically. x is equal to 5. If I am to put this x back here in place of x and say my x is 5, I put back here. Who to the exponent of 5 is supposed to give us this 32? And it's exactly 32. 2 to the exponent of 5 is exactly 32. Just like that. So you need to work with more questions, guys, more revisions uh, in your exams. So these are the typical questions, guys, that you might have. Let's continue to revise uh, where there are questions. Communicate. That is the purpose of the comment section so that we know areas to add or to work on. So that's it, guys. Till we meet again.